Okay, so welcome everyone. Are you able to see my screen? for some people to join. Okay, so I'm just trying to see if we have everyone started off. I think we should get started. Okay, so uh, let me stop sharing and um, try to make sure that you all have um, logged into the system um, for the DevOps transformation experiential simulation um, that we are talking about today. Okay, so as we start here, I don't know whether I am in the workshop on table, so I'll probably give a minute or so for people to join, and then we'll get started. <clears throat> Okay, so as we start looking at it, let me get started off. Thanks for joining us for this edition of the DevOps Transformation Experiential Simulation. So I'm going to quickly go there and share my screen. And you should see my slide deck. And yeah, so as we start to look at, uh, my name is Suresh GP. I'm the Managing Director of Top Solutions and also the global ambassador for DevOps Institute. I'm also the BRM regional leader for Asia Pacific and also an international speaker in a lot of these conferences. So I have overall about 20 plus years in the industry, uh, specialized in IT service management, IT governance, organizational change management, business relationship management, agile and DevOps. Um, I manage top solutions for three entities, India, Singapore, and in the US. And I've actually spoken in a lot of those conferences in around the world. And I was also awarded the ITSM Contributor of the Year 2013 by ITSM of Singapore. I'm also one of the HDI's top 25 thought leaders in service management for four consecutive years, 2017, 18, 19, and 20. And I was also awarded the um, award for uh, the Business Relationship Manager of the Year 2021 Top BRM uh, by the BRM Institute. With that, I will probably start jumping into this simulation game. The aim of the simulation is to help develop a common understanding of what business can achieve working together as one team. As you know, we have a lot of um, people um, focused on IT service management, agile, DevOps, and different other frameworks that we work today. So if you look at the flexibility of the simulation. Simulation is more about experiential learning. We put people into an actual situation and see how we will apply the principles of DevOps, Lean, service management, SRE in real practice, right? So that's the whole part. So if you look at DevOps, DevOps is a philosophy, right? Where we talk about comms, it requires us to understand Lean, service management, and Agile. So as part of values around DevOps, we focus on culture, automation, lean, measurement, and sharing. These are the encompassing the overall DevOps values, right? 
and we always already have an agile manifesto based on 2001 um agile manifesto incidentally it's 20 years where we talk about some of these principles from individuals and interactions with process and tools working software to comprehensive documentation collaboration to contract negotiation responding to change and following a plan so we have all these principles that we follow and there are ITIL for guiding principles that talks about start where you are, focus on value, progress iteratively with feedback, think and work holistically, collaborate and promote visibility, keep it simple and optimize and automate. If you look at this whole aspect, all of these stuff has to be inculcated as part of a culture and behavior. Right? So what we're going to do is going to quickly a scenario, right? So typically, every organization has got a plan, build, deploy, and run process, right? So we're going to take a, a use case scenario where a travel and accessories company, which is uh, uh, the global air as a company, is having a lot more technical debt because they are running on premise. They have a monolithic architecture. And the availability of the critical applications is pretty poor. So if you look at this whole um, element around deploy and run, they are in a you know, deep mess. And the, they have poor customer experience. So when we look at the first line support, they have poor prioritization and slow MTTR, mean time to recover and repair the service, right? So they don't have problem management. There's a lot of pressure around second line. That's where we are going to get into that, right? So I would probably start to focus on this game into two dimensions. One, as part of demand, where you have a demand, how do you address the demand to deliver finally value in the form of customer experience? You look at your service performance, right? Your application availability, um, performance indicators, and see whether we are going to deliver that business value, right, in terms of dollar value. And also in terms of availability, right? How am I going to keep my systems up and running? Okay. So we are going to talk about a company called Global Air. That's the company that we all work. So we know how is the experience when you try to book tickets for your travel purpose. So currently you are under section number 250 on the leaderboard. Um, and you have an operating margin of minus 4.1. So that's not a good news. And uh, particularly in the COVID-19 situation, there's not a lot of travels. So we need to do something to improve the operating margin. And we want to get our shelves up in the red. So you know that some of the best airlines in the industry today includes Emirates, KLM, Etihad, Delta, Lufthansa. So we want to be on the top banner, right, of people, of airlines as part of how we work. So the whole simulation game is focused on what we call as plan, what you're gonna do, do it, reflect upon whether it actually made sense for us to achieve the goal, and then reflect on what is the theory that we learned as part of DevOps in a real world situation. So we have spread it over month by month, right? So quarter one is three months, quarter two, and that's how we will start playing this game. So as a start of month one, our operating margin is minus 3.3%. Our customer experience is 57.97%. And the lost revenue because of doing this is about $10.75 million, right? So it's not a good news as we start to see through this exercise. Now, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to stop share here and then start going into my application here, which is the DTX part of the simulation game. So let me go through this one. And let me know once you see the screen here. You're all able to see the screen, right? So this is the DTX simulation game that I was talking about. So we will play the standalone game, right? So as it starts to open up the simulation, remember, we are an organization which is global air, which is at the 250th position in terms of ratings. And what we have to do is to ensure that we move on to the top 100 push. So we are in uh, month one. 
and we know that there is already a lot of problems. So let's look into it. So if I go to watch month one in action, so you look at the entire screen and typically this game is played for a whole day with our clients to make them aware of either service management, agile, DevOps, IT lab engineering, you name it. So instead of putting people into death by PowerPoint, we focus on achieving this whole goal of making it impactful. So currently, we are part of Global Air. We are under the 250th position, and our operating margin is minus 3.3%. Right? So if you look at this one, these are our live services. So um, there are a lot of fares and pricing. There's a ticketing platform. There's a group booking. These are our live services, and these are our operations team. Right? So we have different uh, number of incidents currently. At the moment, we have about 45 incidents, right? And uh, this is our, not everything is on cloud, right? We still have our own legacy applications that we uh, focus on, which is under um, different uh, areas. So if I click on view reports, I told you that currently we have lost revenue about $10.75 million which is not a good news at all. We are bleeding. And our customer experience is about 57.97%. That's also pretty bad. So what we have to think is that, what can we do to move out from the 250th position to move forward? So if you look at this elements, we are going to talk about operating margin, which is negative, which means we are bleeding. If you don't uh, make a positive uh, revenue, then we have to shut down the system. Then we talk about customer experience, which is also pretty bad, right? Because obviously the um, systems are not stable. People are um, losing a lot. Or there's a lot of incidents and people are paranoid about it, right? So if I look at um, the insights part, so this gives you an insight of what is the organization stakeholder feedback, right? We talk about in DevOps to measure feedback for us to understand how every stakeholders is relating to the situation. So the first thing is the CEO, who is a key stakeholder, says my short-term goal for quarter one is to get Global Air into the top 200 on the airline leaderboard. Remember, as we start the conversation, we are at 250th position. So within the three months of effort, we have to reach the 200th position. In an actual game, we will give you all logins to go there and uh, play your own roles and then see how it improves. But for this workshop, just to make sure everybody follows me, we are looking at logging into the um, system as global app. We are in month one and we are looking at insights. And the number two insight from CFO, to achieve Q1 position in the top 200, we need to reduce lost incidents to below 5 million per month, as you know, our current run rate is 10.97 million loss as part of lost incidents. So what you would like to focus is to prevent that incident from getting lost, right? Because you're losing revenue, right? business impact. The third one is CMO, which is customer marketing officer or customer um, management office. Our overall customer experience score is poor. The perception is that we have unreliable systems which are losing, causing customer frustration, which means that the systems are breaking out. We have unplanned outages, right? The tech ops sees that feedback from all users that our ability to prioritize incidents is very poor. Oh, that's bad. So we don't have prioritization metrics, whether it's a P1 incident or a P2 incident or a P3 incident. And looking forward to further development once tech ops have sorted the issue. So right now, let's not worry about dev team because Right now, we need to make our incidents under control. That's our whole prerogative that we are trying to focus on. Reporting a very poor overall experience using the global app with the online booking system. So we know that we have to reduce the incidents from $10 million to $5 million. We also have to get onboarded on the online booking system, which is um, an issue, right? So if I look at this whole thing, I also am reading through the competitor analysis. Airmax, which is our competitor for Global Air, have increased their customer base by focusing on reliability of critical systems. 
obviously business critical system should be up and running available 24 cross 7 365 days analysis of traveler behavior suggests that even minor issues with online experience results in lost opportunity and customer defection no wonder because our online booking system has got an issue right they are going to have a problem that oh this is not working as as well so we need to look at this online booking system so what i do is i go to my strategy and then look at all my services that i'm supporting today so i have the services like payment reservations online booking you know that there was a problem with online booking right but they are also about revenue so i'm going to group it by revenue right so if i look at maximum revenue online booking generates 180000 as part of revenue right but you look at the priority it's probably low so it doesn't make any sense right so what i would like to do is this first look at making these services based on revenue and make this priority as high so can i look at up to 100000 dollars i make it high right so payment is 167 i make it high then I make it this one high. This is again high. I want it in high. And the rest of them could be medium, right? So anything around this one could be medium. So I have now prioritized, okay, this one as a part of um, um, prioritizing this whole thing. Because in that earlier one, for online booking, it was low priority. So I hope that will give us a, a jump start in terms of addressing one of the elements called prioritization. What I also want to know now is what are my reports that I have that I can leverage. And remember, in month one, you have $50,000 as part of taking corrective action. So that's the budget that you have that you can take charge to apply it in a real world situation. So the first thing that we did was look at the prioritization of the services. You look at online booking. Now you're looking at reports, right? So when I look at my reports, I have a couple of things. One is I can look at my incident log or I can look at my service performance, right? So if I click on incident log, I get to spend about $20,000. So would you want to spend? That's a discussion that we have generally as a part of the group, right? So we ask a question. Should we look at our incident analysis report to see where we are losing money? Or should we focus on elements like, um, OK, we did this one. Should we look at our service performance report? Right. So that's a call that you have to take as a, as a team when you're trying to prioritize what will help us to reduce the incidents. So it's very clear I might have to pick up either a service and performance report under service performance report, I have my availability report. I have my mean time to restore service report. I might also have problem management report. So you have to decide that the criticality of the systems are a problem, right? Because the availability of the systems is poor, so we might want to do it. But because we have three months, it's like a fail-safe experimentation. So it's not that you will get everything perfect first time, right? So what I would do is I would probably start with an incident log. I'll purchase it. And this is just going back to the incident year. And then say, how can I apply this, right? So when I try to look at this whole uh, section, I go to the online booking part, which was a problem. And um, everything that shows red is means it's down. So I'm trying to look at online booking. And it says this is down and it is a software incident, right? And uh, then I go back here. Um, this is again a software incident. And then I go back here and then there's a same software incident. So I have a problem with online booking software, right? So anything that shows green is your system live. It's a, it's a runtime update of your CMDB of your configuration items that shows you. Anything which is brown, it shows dependencies, right? So that's that's the part that we are seeing here. So let's say I need to prioritize my uh, online booking. I know that I have to do something with the element of a software incident. So what I do, 
I go back here and then start looking at my strategy. And then remember, we had this as high priority. I'll probably go as part of a version two, right? Because version two is talking about a version two upgrade of the software. So I probably consume $15,000 um, uh, as part of this one. I, I also uh, use $20,000 as part of the, um, the um, issue, right? So then I go back again to the incident report. If I can do something with um, payment, right? So I'm trying to prioritize. I go back to my reports here. I'm going to my incident log. And uh, I'm looking at, is there any other things that I do, um, which is on the payment system? right? And uh, this is talking about, again, a software incident. So I want to do some remedial action on the payment part because it's got a lot of revenue. And this I would also want to have a V2. So what I do is I go back to my strategy and I try to look at V2 here. And I've done, right? So I have made some actions based on the scenario that we discussed, and I'm going to save and see what's my score looking like, right? So it says you, these were the options you selected. So we looked at these um, um, services as part of medium priority. This was the payment and online, which we have made some changes and I say play months too. So what it does is that it starts to score based on the information that we have provided and then start asking us how did we perform from the 250th position remember we had the 10.97 million um, as uh, incident um, impact so with all these changes that we have done and spent the fifty thousand dollars what's going to be our score as we look into month two so if i look at month two I am trying to see how much I am improving. I was at 250th position. I'm still making some improvements. My operating margin is also kind of making some changes. Oh, that's good because I'm right now under 215, 14, 13, 12, 10, 9, 204th position because I made some smart decisions as part of the uh, strategy that helped us to achieve an operating margin of 3.6 person, and we are at 204 position. So if I go back to my view reports and see how much we lost in terms of revenue for incidents, right now I'm at 5.92 million, which is much, much great from what we did as part of 10.97 million, right? And my operating margin has also moved from negative to being positive, right? So that's the kind of strategy that you try to take at every step that will give you a scorecard. And if you play with this particular thing, we have multiple people who can play uh, this simulation game. It's all digital. So uh, everybody will be given a login. You will get also a board which will tell you about relatively how much people score, right? So generally, we play every month and we do retrospective. So based on the decisions that you make, you can focus on how we can improve this from where you are to where you want to move forward, okay? So this is just a part of the game and we have a lot of other things that we explain. Like for example, if you want to look at the backlog of items, development, what's your um, you know, processing time, what's your wait time, how much time does it take to get it resolved from first line support, which is about 800 half days, right? Which is really not a good indication because you're doing a lot of waiting time. So if you apply the lean principles, these are things that we could have avoided in terms of um, you know, removing non-valuable act activities. So at every stage, you have a lot of these elements that we can bring in as part of metrics, right? So you take some corrective actions around it. So if you look at the availability of it, you can go back into much more details of what's the current availability and go, what are some of the options if you have certain things? So this whole system is a self service option, right? Depending on the scenario that you're dealing with, you can actually make some changes, improvements, and then take it forward. So you will finally get your scores. So every time it's about $50,000 that you get. And after some time, you get uh, also some budgets for development. Right now, as part of quarter one, you're only reducing the number of incidents 
and getting yourself back to your um, place. Yeah. So any questions so far from what we have discussed? Right. So I'll probably go and show you around what we had in the in the in the in the scenario that will finally what will happen. Right. So if you look at what we are talking about here, we will spread this over a complete six month cycle. Right. So in month two, we will focus on availability. We look on, on problem management. I'm not sure whether I'm sharing that screen, but uh, I want to make sure that we are sharing it currently. Right. So, yeah, I'm sharing my screen. So we'll probably try to look at this one um, as we start to speak through this. So at month now, we will talk about our availability and problem management. Then we look at incident logs and start to build a ecosystem of looking at other practices. Remember, the whole intended objective is to move from stability to move towards agile and then DevOps because it's a journey, right? And at every instance, you start seeing what works and what needs to be improved as we start growing through this whole cycle. Remember, we had at starting of the month, we had $10.75 million lost, right? There were about 46 incidents and the mean time to restore service was about 9.1 days. So how are we going to go from the month one to month six about losing it about 2.55 million, reducing the incidents, reducing the MTRS and improving the availability? So that's the whole speech part of how we are building this as an ecosystem for people to actually learn on the ground as to how we can apply these principles and practices in live action so that you can get advantage of how we can apply this in a real world situation and take to um, understand DevOps better. So I'll probably stop here and uh, you can you, you can join me on LinkedIn, um, which I think I shared around. So if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to uh, take any questions because you have about five minutes for the questions to answer. Okay. Any other questions at this moment? Okay, so uh, if you would like to um, um, have a, a free episode to, to run through this one, you can reach out to us and we will be more than happy to provide you insights for um, for for doing the um, simulation game. As I said, you can play the simulation game with um, um, a, a bunch of people to a, a larger task force itself. There is no restriction around the number of people who would be involved to play the game. So you can actually use it for your uh, purpose and uh, have some fun, right? There's a lot of um, aspects that we play in a manner that uh, you will get a lot more insights from how this is getting applied. And um, because it's a fail-safe experimentation, you will um, learn a lot of lessons. And we do this as part of top solutions in bringing in awareness for people to understand about DevOps, Lean, IT service management, site reliability engineering, where you try to educate the people more from an aspect of applying this in real world rather than just talking about a lot of theory. Right. Hopefully you got that insights from the, the, the session today. I'll be more than happy to see if you have any other further questions. As you know, you can join me on Suresh GP on LinkedIn uh, if you want to know more about the details around playing this simulation game for you or for your clients. So that way you don't need to uh, boil the ocean. It is a much more pragmatic approach to see how we can uh, you know, apply this in a real world situation. Okay, so any other questions, comments, thoughts that you would like to know as part of this session? I'll give you a few minutes for people to um, chat if you have any. I'll look at the chat. So 
if it's centralized interface and having access to person's information, would it risk person's identity or possibly? Um, I'm not sure which, oh, this was an earlier question. So it's not related to um, what we are talking about. Um, but yeah, this is uh, protected. So uh, we are strictly bound by data privacy laws. So your information is not shared with other people. And it's made sure that uh, only the right stakeholders can, can access it. So we have a specific event that we create as part of the DevOps um, transformation. And um, we uh, make sure that only one of those persons are, are accessing. And I have a admin console, which I can see who are the people who are, um, who are accessing it and um, can make sure that there is no um, unauthorized entry to uh, think about, right? Any other questions? Um, yeah, so from a, from a game point of view, um, this can be done as an education or awareness session. It could be for your senior leadership team. It could be for anybody. Anybody who likes to understand about DevOps, digital transformation, uh, we, we, we can play the game, right? Um, and also, uh, before we play the game for a specific corporate, we just have conversations with them to understand um, uh, what they want to achieve as part of goals. Is it more of awareness or they are going to test some things? And accordingly, we will be providing them the insights. So we do an intake session before we do a actual session. Uh, there's a good question. Now, we typically can play this for a whole day, about six hours, or four hours or two hours. It depends on what's the availability of the team and who are getting involved. Accordingly, we can play this as part of either uh, a full-fledged eight-hour session or a six-hour session or a, a two-hour session as well. The more we play, we have a lot more conversations and dialogue to do that. So you can actually share this with uh, on a Zoom or a Teams or a WebEx. So we can have a, a breakout rooms. We can have a anonymous um, or, or we can have a, a periodic retrospectives to share and, 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 and get learns things from that. Yeah. So uh, with that, uh, if there are no other questions, I would definitely thank all of you for spending your time here uh, in attending the API Days conference. And I hope you got some insights about the DevOps transformation experience. It's spread over um, three or four um, quarters. So we've just talked on the tip of the iceberg as part of quarter one, but you get a sense of how do we apply agile, lean, DevOps principles in a real life situation. Okay. So with that, I wish you a great conference as part of API days. And I who, who took the time off and came here to attend the session. Thank you, everyone.